welcome back to my channel scrap and coffee in today's video we are going to decorate our first latte project which i called the mint and mistletoe folio because that's the paper collection that i'm using by kaisercraft and i'm going to decorate this um, for the most part together with you on on a camera so uh, there's a few reasons that i wanted to do this um, but the main reason is i get questions uh, about how I tackle decorating so often people ask me like how do you make up your mind on what papers to combine what are your top three tips on decorating and I just find that a pretty hard question to answer because the most important thing when you decorate is that it looks good to you and what looks good to me might not look good to you or you might make a different choice and that looks better to you or just as good or you know it's that's just the most important thing when it looks good to you and you are happy with your project and you're doing it right and I think that's the beauty of um, crafting not just paper crafting but crafting and artists and you know you can just do what feels good to you but I am uh, wanting to do this for quite some time and I just hope that I get more time uh, now that we are settled uh, to do this sort of stuff where I just take you with me in the decorating process as well because most of the time I only do the construction part right so I just hope I can have a little bit more time on taking you through that as well now I am cheating a little bit because if you might have known I did a um, markup already so I kind of know what I want to do but we are going to change some things up um, but I'm just going to take you through the first uh, steps, just like I would have this collection fresh, freshly delivered to my house or picked up at the store and um, we're going to explore what we want to do with this folio. So let's get to it. Okay, so what I'm using is one 12 by 12 paper pack. Like I said, it's called Mint and Mistletoe by Kaisercraft. You can use any collection that you want, right? This paper pack uh, contains out of 12 sheets of double-sided paper. So if you have something with a similar amount, you have enough to decorate your whole folio. And maybe you've seen it um, this time where I often make photo spots. I covered the whole thing with pattern paper this time. And I will talk a little bit more about that as well. Uh, but not right now uh, so that would be enough now the kaiser craft collections um i also have the die cuts by the way but i probably use them in the next part not in this video i think so i'm going to put them to the side okay so i got the papers out of the packaging and i put the die cuts away for a second because i have a package of die cuts but i'm not going to use it um, until we're done decorating the base uh, so the first thing that i do is i just flip through the collection to see what is it that I have to work with and there are a few things that I will keep in mind or what I'm looking for so the first thing is what are interesting patterns what do I like what maybe I don't like so much um, and are there things that I need for my project like I'm going to use this one that I've already decorated because it's a little bit easier to see but on the photo flaps where we made the angled belly bands I need a pattern there Personally, I prefer something that is solid or close to solid or has a pattern where it doesn't mind that I'm going to uh, tip it over. So it doesn't look weird when you use your paper at an angle um, to save paper. Because if I'm going to do this out of something with, with a pattern that, that looks weird when you tip it over, then you're going to need to cut it out of a really big sheet of paper and it will cost you a lot of uh, paper basically so that's what I'm keeping my eye on in this case and um, yeah I just gonna go through it one time and what I did is you have 12 sheets of paper and there are six uh, different types so you get two of each and this is the front side and then this is the back side so see how that how I did that and um, so we're really a beautiful pattern here all the colors from the collection are in it so this is a really good transition paper and then on the back side we have this beautiful green polka dot that can give a really nice um, uh, something a little bit more uh, calm for your eyes then we have this dark blue star pattern really nice and on the back we have a solid craft color which may is not so appealing to the eye in the first uh, look 
at the first glance, I don't know how to say. Okay, then we have this green with the, um, oh, I never know those names when I'm filming, but yeah, you get it. And then on the other side, we have this Christmas tree here. We're at the first thought, immediately I'm thinking that's nice for the cover. Of course, I, I'm cheating, but um, yeah, that's a nice image to do something with on a cover, for example. Then we have a sheet with cut apart. So I always like to save myself at least one of these for using the cut aparts uh, if it's possible. And then on the other side, we have this dark blue wood grain. Then we have this music sheet, um, which looks really good, but um, I don't know really know how I can use this where it still feels like it's really something special in the project. And then on the back, we have this really nice green pattern. I'm trying to get that, but the light sometimes makes it a little bit difficult. But it's this is something that I call close to solid. There is pattern in there, but um, yeah, it's quite a calm sheet of paper. We have this craft with all the houses, trees, birds, stars. There's lots of things going on here, really nice. Um, but a little bit on the busy side and then on the back side we have this again a star pattern this is really dark green I combined it with the dark blue and then actually you don't notice anymore that it's green and it, it almost looks blue so and then then we have that and then this is a sticker sheet that's um, letter numbers and some strips so we can do something fun with that as well so I have my first idea of papers that I want to use. So this, what I notice is, this is a really important pattern in my collection. It contains all the colors in the collection and I think it's basically the only one that has that, except for the music sheet where we have a little bit of that on top as well. But really important, we can combine it with every color of the collection. Basically you can almost combine every sheet of this collection with, um, with each other. Um, so really important to me. Now I really like the polka dot that's on the back, but probably I'm going to need both sheets of this pattern in my project. Then I was needing something solid or close to solid for my belly bands. So the options that I noticed were this crafts or the dark blue that's on the back of the cut aparts, right? Yeah. So those are really good options for my, my belly bands. So probably that's the first decision that I'm going to make. And now I really like the polka dot, but I probably won't be using it. And then luckily, because that's not always the case, but in this time it's the case, I don't really know what to do with this sheet, but I love this green here. And then we, that's a good replacement, although it's a different kind of green, but it's a good replacement for that polka dot. So we will probably use this green quite a lot instead of this music sheet here. It's not that I don't like it. It's just that it might not work for me as well in this project. So that's like the first couple of things and then the rest we need to figure out while we go. So I think I'm going to start with the belly bands. And like I said, I'm going to change a few things up in uh, the decorating of the, of the project. So that's what we are going to do. We are going to make our first measurements and our first cuts. Okay, so I have the folio back in. And all what I also want to do, what I do nine out of 10 times when I'm starting my decorating process is think about what do I want to do with the cover. Now, like I said, that paper with the Christmas tree on it, that was eye catching for me to place that on the cover and do something with it. Here we go. So I think I'm going to place this to the side and uh, save that so I'm not using it by accident and don't have it for the cover later on. But I might need some, I might need to cut my piece for the cover and then use the rest for the inside later on. And then we are going to start with the decorating process. Now, one thing that I do want to say is if you look at my folio, it's also, it's not full, right? We are going to stuff this up, but as you see, it kind of, sinks in a little bit this is coming out a little bit and we can of course make a closure for this there are several options that you can use you can use magnets by just placing i would do two sets so a magnet here a magnet here and have that closed on the flap on the other side that is a really good option you can also have some ribbon going around your project to keep it closed but we can also make for example a belly band to slide around it there are so many options that you can use to make a closure for this uh, i'm not gonna do 
magnets or ribbon. Uh, but I might, if I have enough papers left at the end, think about a belly band or something to, um, to keep it closed a little bit better. Okay, so we put that cover sheet to the side. I know I want to start with the hard part with the, um, with the flaps. I'm going to see, do I have a photo mat here? Okay, I cut up some uh, copy paper to just show you a little bit better what we are working on. So right here, and like I said, something solid or something close to solid, and I'm going to change towards the brown craft in this case. So I'm going to measure the width of my belly band, which I know is one inch, but I'm measuring one inch. And you need to decide for yourself on how much of black do you want to see after putting on your pattern paper. Now I went for a 1 8 inch border on my project where you can still see the black edge. Uh, you can also go for a 1 16th of an inch border. It's all up to you what you like or what you don't like. But I'm going to go for a 1 8 inch border. So in order to get 1 8 of an inch on both sides, I need to make my pattern paper piece a quarter inch smaller than my measurement. But I'm going to step away from that with the very first piece that I'm cutting. Because when I do something like this or um, on a belly band or like a strip, I never really care for that 1 8 inch border. I like it to be a little bit smaller. So I'm going to cut my piece here to about 7 8 of an inch. Maybe just here under the 7 8 of an inch. Uh, but I'm just going to cut a strip out of this pattern. Um, Oh yeah, that's also what I wanted to say is on these pieces you also have these strips here at the bottom. So let me just show you on this piece of 12 by 12 right here. Get my paper trimmer in and hopefully that's uh, not going to uh, get in the way of my, uh, my camera mounts like that. So I'm going to cut off that little strip there and then my piece is 12 by 12. So I line that up on the place where my trimmer is going to cut and I'm going to place this to the side not every paper collection has this but Kaiser Cross Kaiser Craft has that and I'm I might use that somewhere so now I have this 12 by 12 sheet of paper and I need to cut 7 eighths of an inch off of this so it's just over 12 I can extend my leg here but it's not standing completely straight on my work surface so I can cut this to 11 and 1 8 of an inch. Let's see how that works. Then this should be 7 8 of an inch. And I like to double check that because I struggle a little bit with this paper trimmer. But that looks about right. So hold that in place. And then I have that 7 8 of an inch here. And I just have a try to see how I, if I like that. That looks good. Now I'm going to try to do this with one strip and we'll see if I can make that work so I have to uh, move stuff around a little bit while decorating that's one of the reasons why I don't really um, prefer to fill my decorating process but it is what it is I guess okay so I have my strip of paper here I need to get a pencil and I'm going to line it up Right here are different ways where you can do this, but this is just how I like to do it. I'm lining up the point here at, at the top where I want to have it. And then this side is sticking out, right? So I'm making sure that my border is even on both sides or close to even and straight. And I just know that I need to cut my paper from this point of the paper. And I need to get my head in a little bit. That's what you need to, get, need to do to make sure that you cut everything right. And just mark here basically i just mark like a 1 16th of an inch in from the folded edge of my belly band I make a little pencil mark there and then i'm going to line those pencil marks up in my paper trimmer i'm going to put it in frame one time and then you know what i'm doing and then it's uh, i'm going to do it out of frame because otherwise it's going to take a very long time all of this so line up my pencil marks in the trimmer, cut it off. So now we have that angle there. 
And I just like to do it in steps because you know you can correct some stuff. It's my decorating process is a little bit like that really is like my therapy side of this paper crafting where I can just now you see, I don't really like how it goes here. I think I want to angle it a little bit further in so I can just correct that a little bit. And that is just me being way too precise. If you're happy with what you did, you're happy with what you did. Okay, so line it up nicely. So what you also can do is just really mark the fold of your piece and then cut it a little under it. But I'm afraid that I'm going to cut on the wrong side of my pencil lines. That's why I don't do it. So I mark it just about 1 16th of an inch away from the fold onto the piece, if that makes sense. Okay, cut that off and just... Okay, pretty happy with that. Now I have this strip and I'm not really able to use it here. But what I can do is go to the other side of my folio. If you want to do exactly the same thing there, look at that. That lines up perfect. So I can just use that for right here. I'm going to do that. So I can put this piece of white under here so everybody can see. I can normally, I would just place it here and do that later, just work on that one side first. But So I just do the same thing, I mark, and I'm going to cut that off. And we can place that there. So now I need to cut another strip of 7 eighths of an inch and repeat that for my other two belly bands. So I cut it to 11 and 1 eighth of an inch, so take away 7 eighths is going to be 10 and a quarter. Double check. Yes, that's about right. So line it up to where the point is where I think I want it. And again, I need to get in, in frame a little bit. Just making sure everything is even the border. Mark that and cut that. And do the same thing here at the bottom. Okay, so there we have it. And then this piece I will put on here on the other side and I know that I can, I can do that later on once I'm at that point that I can work on that side. Okay, so now this is a little bit of a boring pattern paper, right? So we need something um, with a little bit of interest and the one paper that has a little bit of interest and has this brown color in it is the paper with that nice pattern. All the leaves, all the branches. <laughs> Forgive me. I'm just, uh, it's, sometimes it's hard for me to uh, get all the words right. But you know what I mean, right? I'm trying to keep this in frame here because I try to keep my camera focused on it so it doesn't zoom in and out the whole time like it did during the construction. So what am I going to do is I'm going to place this pattern on the pocket. And for that I need to know the width of the pocket. And the pocket is 5 and 3 eighths. So in order to get that 1 8 inch border I'm going to cut my piece of paper here to 5 and one eighth of an inch from top to, so I measure it over five and one eighth of an inch. And uh, so let's start with that and then we need to measure the height of the pocket. Okay, so I cut off that five and one eighth of an inch. And then the height of the pocket is, I believe it was four, but I'm not 100% sure, yeah, four. So I'm going to cut that to three and three quarters. So two pieces, and in order to have my pattern continue, I'm going to cut three and three quarters, and then again, three and three quarters. Okay, so put that on my scrap pile. 
and we can place that under the belly button but if, under the belly button <laughs> under the belly band but again i need to cut that angle so i'm going to line it up where i want it again i'm going to try to have the white show there on top so even out your black border and have the point here where you want it and then i need to mark all my paper Here the angle of my pocket starts right here, so I'm going to go straight down and mark that on the paper. And then cut from the point here at the bottom to my pencil mark. Okay, scrap piece of paper there. I don't know, I feel like my paper is not completely straight. Okay, that's one and then we have to do the same thing here so this will go on top place some white if you need to to see a little bit better place the point where we need it to be see this paper this pattern paper is not straight it's just it's really really off Okay, I tried to correct that a little bit. I said it was really, really off. It wasn't that bad, but enough to uh, make it hard for me to line it up how I want it still, but okay, just do the best that I can. I'm going to mark here where the angle starts on my paper and cut that angle. But it's just if your pattern paper is not straight and you need to cut an angle in it, it's going to be a, quite a challenge to get it all nicely how you want it. But we just do the best that we can, right? Just try to do the best that we can. So then we need this part here. And to create some cohesiveness, I like to have the brown come back there again. So I'm going to measure... here from the point of my flap to the point the shortest point of my angled pocket and it should be the same for both flaps but that's two and seven eighths of an inch now i want to go in the pocket slightly so i'm going to cut a strip i think three inches because we're going to stay away one eighth of an inch from this side so three inch strip from the brown pattern and then that also needs to be three and three quarter inches in height. Okay, and then we have that scrap piece left. Okay, so I can place that in here just into the pocket. And in here just into the pocket. Now you see, I didn't really care for the brown as a 12 by 12 sheet. But now that I'm combining it with the patterns, it actually looks pretty good to me at least. Okay, so now we have all of that and I can just stick it down right now if I want to. But what I like to do is take another step and ink the edges. When you cut the paper, the core of the paper is white. And I want to either make the paper more interesting with inking the edges or make it blend in with the background, like the base cardstock that I'm using. So in this case, I'm going to do that. I'm going to make it blend in with my black base. And for that, I'm going to use a black ink. And normally I use the Distress ink, and this is also Distress, but um, well, I hope you know what I mean. But this is the Archival ink, Archival ink. Uh, also the same color, black suit, um, but this is what I had with me. And I have an ink blending tool, put some ink on there, and I'm going over the edges just to make that black. See how that white core disappears? And I will do, I will ink the top part and then maybe it's it's really hard to see on camera i guess but in real life i feel that you really see that is how that looks different how it feels more finished and if you want to you can ink a little bit more heavy if you want to go for that look but in this case i just i don't mind if i see a little bit of the ink but i don't want to go too heavy if you have, um, well, probably you're working with a different paper collection, so you just look for something similar 
uh, in your paper collection or just something that works for you really well together and then you can follow the same steps right now for this piece i'm not going to see this edge so i'm not going to bother inking it i'm just going to save myself some time and not ink that edge just make sure that we stick it down in the right way right so when we're placing this piece in i cover the the, the attachment strips on the top and bottom but not the one here right and that's why i did that tape while i was constructing so when we want to place something in there it slides nicely over that strip so i'm not sure how well the camera catches that i can also stick it down now but to me it's hard to zoom in with my camera here but i can it it just feels more finished but it's probably a little bit hard to see on camera so I'm going to ink up this part as well. I just like to go do all of that and then just stick it down. So I will probably uh, see you in a minute, in a second. Okay, so all the pieces are inked and now I'm going to stick it down one by one. I'm just going to start with the piece on the belly band. What I like to use for my um, pattern paper is Art Glitter Glue that dries clear. Uh, the wiggle time is not too long, so you need to be a little bit quick, but it's also, you don't have to wait too long for everything to dry. Um, and if you burnish it really well, it's, uh, you don't get all the glue marks, but yeah, you need to burnish it a little bit. And what else did I wanted to say? Yeah, it's water based, so um, yeah, the more you use, the more your paper will bend and warp and all that sort of stuff. But it's a really strong glue, so you don't need a whole lot. So I have this fine tip on there that I really recommend. I just go along the edges. I want my edges to have a good stick. And it's a really thin um, strip of glue that I'm placing on here. And I fill in that little bit, a little bit, because otherwise I feel that the edges will pull on the paper. So this looks like a whole lot, but it's a really thin layer of glue. And we have a little bit of room to place everything where we want it to even out our black edges, but not too much. And then I like to get a bone folder to just rub that glue, burnish it so we don't get all those glue lines through the paper. So if you just if you scribble your glue on and you just stick it down then that's what you will see through it this paper from kaisercraft is pretty thin which is uh, a good advantage in this case uh, because uh, it makes it a little bit easier to layer without creating too much bulk um, for the belly band what i'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over, of course, to the side where we want to have glue. And I'm going to put some glue here around the diagonal edge. A little bit here and a little bit here. Fill that part up a little bit. And then I'm going to slide it in. Here is no glue here. Slide that under the belly band. So I'm not going to stick down before I want to. Hold this piece up so it's not the glue doesn't come on your piece here. Or remove that piece for a second then align that where i want it and now i need to go under here you can also do a strip of double-sided tape that you can remove now it can also be really easy i'm just going to go under and apply some glue there roughly but try to make sure that i have my corner and my uh... see i'm not really happy with how everything's lining up here but it is what it is not everything is perfect and it's fine, it's a handmade piece, so don't be too hard on yourself. We just try to make it look pretty so nobody will be paying attention to how straight your pieces are on there, right? <laughs> okay, then for this piece, I'm going to... You can glue four sides if you want to, especially if you're going to put something in the pocket that might catch onto this piece. I recommend gluing all four sides, but you can also do the three sides that you are going to see. And carefully slide it in and again just look for that border all around maybe you want to remove your white a little bit this is quite a smooth cardstock this pattern paper so I have a little bit more wiggle time which is nice especially for this type of pieces and again try to give that a burnish and also go in the bucket for burnishing it a little bit 
and then we have that in place so I'm going to repeat that for this uh, flap here and while you're burnishing sometimes your glue oozes out a little bit now I had that here and although the glue will dry clear I do recommend to wipe it away either I use my fingers for it you can use a baby wipe I believe um, if you have some baby wipes and you let them air dry then you can use that to wipe your glue as well so don't use them while they're wet because sometimes they're pretty wet uh, let them dry and then you can uh, use it or maybe some paper towel or something but you don't want any fibers to get stuck on your um, project right so my paper is a little off right so what i do is i try to have my eye on the angle so i have a nice border there and then i will just see what happens here you know what it is what it is like i said but if that angle looks really off that's going to be uh, distracting because you have a repeating angle so you want to get that um, as straight as you can people will have their eye will be drawn towards those angles more than they will draw their eyes to the corner here and now the lucky thing is that i also have that little bit of extra space here on that flap before the pocket was attached that helps a little bit with not making it too weird so that's lucky okay so that's the first part done <laughs> we're already at it for a, for a while but um we got something done right Okay, so what are we going to do next? Uh, is there something that we are sure of or not? We have to make some uh, decisions here. So, um, yeah, this is what I was sure of. And of course, we need to do stuff to combine uh, here to all make it work together. But in this type of paper collection, that's what I love about this paper collection. I'm not too worried about needing to save a certain paper to make it all work because most papers will work together so i'm pretty confident to go to a different part like for example here i really want to make this these tag pockets here a cohesive look so what can we do right there let's find we can do this with one paper but i like to break the patterns up a little bit and have papers combined to create some interest so i'm going to find two papers that will work really well here together on the stack pocket okay for the stack pocket i think i like these two papers together although this is a really dark green um that i think this this works it's light this is colorful and solid um there's contrast there there is a little bit more pattern going on than there is here and i feel that it's not too busy together and it still gives us some room to play around and add some extra embellishments if we want to so i like this together so i recommend you to find two sheets in your um, in your collection pack that might work together and i think uh, but that's just me right but i think choosing something that is solid or close to solid for this uh, will work really well because it makes it easier to combine different patterns because when we open this up there is a whole lot going on right we're going to put paper behind here we need to put paper on the flaps maybe you want to decorate the spines so try to not make it too busy that's I guess what I'm trying to say so just keep that part calm and then we can play with what's going on behind it and around it a little bit more it gives you a little bit more opportunity I think um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure my pocket the width of my pocket so let's I'm just going to do this side on camera and then what everything that i do exactly the same on this side i'm going to do off camera to save time right so my pocket is five and one eighth of an inch so for that one eighth of an inch border i would need to cut it to four and seven eighths but again because i like to make it confusing right we have that extra um space here on our flap remember that how when we attached it we were away from our spine there and if i cut this paper a quarter inch smaller than my pocket i'm going to have a really big gap of black here and i don't like that so again for these pieces i'm going to step away from that um, really that one eighth of an inch border on all sides for the width so i'm going to cut my piece 
to five and a quarter and then I might have to uh, slice it down a little bit more but I'm going to start with cutting it at five and a quarter. I'm going to start with cutting the green pattern. I'm going to cut off that little strip here and then cut it from top to bottom. So what did I say? Five. What am I saying? This pocket is I believe it should be five and three eighths. Yeah, so I'm going to cut it to five and a quarter. See, measure twice, cut once. So that's my big sheet. And now I'm going to measure the pocket here, the height of the pocket. So again, I know it's all hard to see, but we can use some white, the corner there. And that is, it should be three inches. So I'm going to cut that to two and three quarters. Okay, and then I'm going to skip the middle pocket because I want to have a different pattern there. I'm going to measure the edge of my flap to the lowest point of my piece F. And that's three inches. Now I want it to go in the pocket a little bit, but I'm going to start a little bit away from the top. So I'm just measuring where I'm in that pocket. So I'm thinking three inches, maybe three and one eighth of an inch to go deep enough. Okay, so that piece will go here. So now I need to check, right? I cut it to five and a quarter. I might need to take off a slitter, but we'll see. You see, that's quite the edge there. And if I would have cut it smaller, it would be even worse. But I have a really small black border there, so I might cut a slit slitter off to even that out a little bit. And that's just how I work. I just cut it and I do a way that I can still cut it down a little bit more. But once I've cut it and I think, ah, it's too small, then I'm stuck, right? I cannot make the piece bigger again. So also here I'm going to do the same thing. And just make sure that you're happy with the borders that you see. Okay, so for here, I'm going to use the other pattern. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut off my strip and then cut five and a quarters. And then I need to measure, again, the height of the pocket until the lowest point of my piece E, if you made that angle, right? So uh, the highest point, so that's about there. So again, I need to uh, eyeball it a little bit, so be on the safe side. So again, I'm going to do three, a little lower than that, ah, three is enough. Or do three and one eighth of an inch to be safe. Okay, and I probably need to cut off that little slitter there as well. So let's see if that fits the pocket, it does. Okay, but now we still need to make that angle in there, right? So now I have these pieces that I can use for the other side. Now, if you really want to be convenient with your paper, what you can do is use this piece for your middle pocket and then have this pattern on top and bottom to change it up a little bit. That's up to you. Um, yeah, you can play around with that. But I'm going to place this, well, it's probably a little bit too, uh, too wide for it. But right there, so I know I can use that for those pockets. But we need to make the angle in here and for that, I'm going to place my project to the side. Hopefully we're going to stay focused. I'm going to need scissors, pencil and a ruler. Decide what is the top of your pattern paper. If it's directional, of course, for this piece it doesn't really matter. Uh, but I do see like here's my pattern is a little bit more. Here it's a little bit faded. I would like to keep that. So I'm going to cut my angle on this part here. So what I need to do is I'm going to flip it over because that works easier for me. I need to find the center of the long side. Now I've cut it to a little bit of a weird measurement because I cut that slitter off. So I need to um, work a little bit on that. So it's just under two and five eighths of an inch in my case. And I need to go five, of an, five eighths of an inch inwards. Just like we did when we were constructing our page. So I'm going to get my head in. Really making sure that I'm lined up. Make a little... Ooh, 
I need to be careful with my pencil because it's the only one that I have. Okay, so mark that dot. And then I'm going to connect the dot all the way to the corner here on top. And that's the line that I'm going to cut on. See that? So five eighths of an inch inwards on the center of the long side. And then we are going to cut. You can use scissors, craft knife. I cut my straight, I ordered a straight blade because I wanted a second one for a while. So I can use one for my chipboard and one for my uh, paper because cutting chipboard is really making your blades dull. So now I hope that will help me with um, being able to use my blade a little longer. So I just like to start at the point there. I'm, I pierced that with my paper piercer so I can put the point of my straight blade in there. Line it up and then I can cut that out. So you can use your scissors, uh, whatever works for you. Now what I want to show you, I'm not going to do it, but it's a possibility. We, should, we cut that off, right? Well, what we can do, is since it's getting a little messy here, of course, because all these pieces that are meant to go on that side of the folio, I can place this here. Of course, I'm going to give that a double check if I'm happy with what I, what I did there. I kind of messed up my corner there, but maybe I'll correct that a little bit. But if you really want to go crazy, <laughs> what you could do is place this piece here or maybe on the other side just to get a little bit of a fun element there. But I'm not going to do it. And then you would make this piece shorter, of course, something like that. But um, yeah, I'm not going to do it. I'm, this probably will end up in the garbage for me. So I need to do the same thing on my piece here. Again, this is going to be the top. I'm going to make the angle on that side. So that's what I said if you made it that far into the tutorial of the construction. If you are doing all these angles in your project, you need to commit. So just making sure two and a quarter, two and a half, two and a quarter, two and a half, just under the two and five eighths. Mark it and bring that point to the corner. So we need to, uh, I'm, because I have these angles in basically all the um, all the pockets. I'm gonna do this a couple of times while I'm decorating. And that's okay with me. Although probably by the end I'm gonna be kind of done with it. So I'm <laughs> trying to put the point of my blade in that little hole that I've pierced. Line it up, push down on my ruler. And don't push too hard with my blade against my ruler, but well, you have to push against it a little bit so you keep going straight. But try not to slid and slide your ruler, right? Okay. So slide that in. I'm just, you know, again, I kind of messed it up. So maybe I need to do with my scissors a little bit. Probably because I was cutting towards the points so I can just you know wasn't going really nice towards that sharp corner there and you can correct things so let's have a look here as well there we go now I can still see my pencil mark a little bit but I'm not going to worry about it because I'm going to put ink on there anyway so there we have it, the angles in our pattern paper. See, with, with a few measurements and a few cuts, you created a really nice pocket there. So I'm inking three sides of the two pieces on top. So only on the bottom piece, I've inked all four sides. And I always try to close up my ink and put it in a safe place because I don't want to get ink to go everywhere where I don't want it. Okay, so let's glue that down. So again, the four sides 
the angles of the sorry the cut edges and the corners are the most important to me that they have a good stock and you see my letter is still on there i don't care i'm just gonna put pattern paper over it you're not gonna see it try to line up make an even border you see some glue is oozing out i'm just going to use my fingers not everybody likes to use their fingers for it do whatever feels good to you i don't mind my fingers getting a little dirty and black of, with the ink and the and then this piece here i'm gonna glue very important three sides only so the side with the angle and the two short sides And fill up this top part a little bit. Stay away from the bottom. And then slide it in. So I'm lifting the bottom pocket up with my finger a little bit. So I have some room to slide it in. So because there is no glue at that bottom part. It helps with sliding in. But what we also don't want to do. Is your, when your piece of pattern paper is too long. And you glue it shut here. Your stack pocket will no longer go all the way to the bottom. You glue that shut. So... In order to prevent that, no glue on the top part. So then if your pattern paper is a little longer than your base cardstock, that's not a, no, no problem. Okay, and here we can glue four sides if you want to, but actually I just find it easier to don't put glue on that bottom part. Just fill it in a little bit. Again, I'm just lifting the pocket up with my finger slightly so I can slide it in hopefully the, the point there doesn't want to go there we go and then again I will use some white to see my edge there a little bit better and go for that black border try to even that out with the borders that I have there and you will just notice that maybe in the beginning you will have a harder time with evening out those, those borders or getting pieces straight on there. Uh, but the more you do it, the easier it will get. And you know, and I know in the beginning I was really stressed about getting it straight and I was fiddling around and then the glue was drying and it was off. I learned to be a little bit more in a calm mental state when putting on my pattern papers and that just helps with uh, getting it straight on and just don't stress too much about it stay calm take a deep breath basically oh uh, maybe that sounds dumb but that's what i did so okay that's what i'm going to do later we need to think about what we are going to do behind here do you see by the way how quickly the mess adds up here on my desk <laughs> that's how it goes during decorating that's okay it's a creative mess, right? An organized mess, maybe even. Uh, okay, for the flap behind our stack pocket here, I, in the other folio, what I did is I used that second sheet with the, with the Christmas tree. And what I did is I cut that to size to fit on the whole sheet and I've cut around the Christmas tree. And then I had a photo that... The photo, the white is the photo, uh, is three and a half by five inches, which is like the half of a five by seven. So if you have an app where you can put two photos uh, together on one photo card and then print it off on a five by seven or have it printed off and then you can cut it in half, right? And then you have two pictures. Uh, so I've made it to where that fits in here in the back, the black background is slightly larger for a black border. And we can slide all of this behind here. And then I think what I did, because I didn't reinforce this with black this time, which sometimes I do, or more often I do, we can slide it behind here. And we need to work that a little bit. See, it's a little tricky. I can use a bone folder or something to lift that up. To lift all of that up. <laughs> So then we have it in place. So you lose quite a bit of the photo. So you need to have the right photo for it. But what I, what I would also do is probably once I have a photo in place here, I would glue it 
like put a little strip of glue there or somewhere where I can reach. So I'm not gonna take it out and put it back in because this edge here is going to be too flimsy and too delicate. It's going to damage over time. So this is an option. And the other option is you just stick it down and just glue your picture on top and you will lose a little bit of the Christmas tree. Whatever you like, both can work, right? It's just, uh, are you willing to put the work in to cut through the Christmas tree? Um, what do you prefer, to see the whole picture or to see the Christmas tree as one? So that is just, yeah, what do you want, right? And I'm honestly, with this type of paper collection, that I call less interesting, but still really fun to work with. And I, I, I love them, honestly. I don't mind as much to putting my pictures on top of the beautiful pattern paper. And when I'm working with Stamperia, for example, I have a little bit more of a hard time with that. I want to see the beautiful papers. Although the book, let's be honest, it's about the pictures that we're going to put in, right? So who cares if you're going to stick it on top of that Christmas tree? It's all up to you. So in order to cut that piece of paper, I'm going to measure my page and it should be eight and a quarter. So in height, I need to cut my piece a quarter inch smaller to eight inches. And I'm going to measure the width, six and a quarter. So I'm going to cut it to six, which is really convenient because if I'm going to cut this, I'm going to cut this strip off. Let me show you on camera because we're at it anyway bumping into the camera so i'm gonna cut off my strip so the piece the paper is actually 12 by 12. okay so now if i'm going to cut my piece to eight i have four inches left and that piece can be perfectly used on our large pockets pieces k and l so I am going to cut this, turn it around, because I want to keep this image intact, to 8 inches. Is that 8? Yeah. So I know that I want to use this piece on those pockets. And then I'm going to cut this in half to six inches and then I have a second piece that will fit perfectly somewhere on one of the larger pages. So that's really convenient. So I cut the eight inches first because I'm not sure what the width of my pockets are and now I can, if I maybe six is too short for it, right? So I think not, but you never know. Yeah, you can measure, of course, <laughs> then you know. Okay, so and what I, I believe what I did, but I'm not sure, is that I used this one here and then I think the other one on the other side of my album. So I'm going to place that there and I have that there. Now I also know that my cover is going to be the, this piece I can use on my front cover. So I know that I can cut some really convenient pieces out of my paper that I'm going to use on the cover as well. So let's not forget about that piece of paper. So we can place that right here. Now the question is, do we want to cut into this, yes or no? And I want to keep it simple actually uh, for this first project. Why do I have the other project here to show you? So what I think, because I kind of liked what I did here, but I was kind of wondering if the work that I did and the amount of space that I lose on my picture is it really worth the effort? If I stick it on top and I embellish it here a little bit more, I can make that a really nice page. So I'm not going to cut into it. I will show you that technique in another project uh, sometime. Um, but uh, And I think I've shown it in other projects as well in the past. But if you really want to know, I will show you that sometime because it's something that I use quite often. So I'm going to ink around these edges. And then I have something else in mind that is a really simple trick to add a little bit to your paper. But I think I'm going to do it on the other one first and then make up my mind if I want to do it on here as well. 
And by the way, I can tell you quickly, if you want to cut into this, what you need to do. Okay, so I used a three and a half by five for that, for that pitch, right? Let me see if I have a, a three by four as well. Okay, well, that's fine. So this is a three and a half by five, right? That takes up quite a lot of space. And of course, you can also go with a smaller picture. So this is just under three by four inches. Uh, but something like that can maybe work a little bit better for you as well. But what I did is I've placed it on here where I had at least half an inch from this cut edge, but I preferred even five eighths of an inch. And then I kind of mark with my pencil to where that photo mat is going on my paper by the tree, right? And then when I removed it, I'm going to trace around the Christmas tree. I kept a little bit of a border of that um, little bit white, gray, greenish background, but I traced all around it roughly with my pencil lightly because you want to remove it. And then I got a craft knife. Where is it? I got a craft knife and I start cutting on that pencil line and just made that slit. And then when you glue it down, you just make sure that you don't glue on the back side here where you want your photo mat to slide under. You glue this part down, your edges, and this part here where your photo mat slides over. So if you want to do it, choose a photo size that works for you and use that as a guide on how far you need to cut. And just try it before you stick everything down. Maybe you want to cut in a little bit further or a little. Well, you can cut a little less, so only a little further. So, but what I wanted to do is, and I'm going to use the other sheet of paper for it, because then I can decide if I really want to do it on this one as well. And I'm sorry if I'm confusing you with going from one paper to the other, but what I did here is I've been using a black marker to make some pieces a little bit more interesting. I've been doing a little bit of a faux stitch lining. And I did it here as well. I haven't continued with other pieces, but I just wanted to see how I like that. And it just adds a little bit. If this, if you feel like, hmm, it looks plain, I need to add something. This is a really simple and quick trip, uh, tip to just doodle on your paper. It's all good. So like a fine tip, um, I always use the microns, but I, I don't know what the real name is, but I feel like it's called something like micron. Um, fine tip marker. This is a big marker. It's from the brand Big and it works so I can use it. It's a little bit of a thicker line. Uh, I haven't inked this yet. So there are a few things that I can do. I can do this here. That's a little bit more um, controlled. You can also just scribble your lines on it and not worry about it too much. Just think of something playful so i'm thinking about what do i want to do i'm afraid if i'm going to scribble on here it's going to be a little bit too too thick we can also do some scribbling here and there and some stitching on the other places because stitching is going to take a long time over this big piece so i'm just gonna go for it you know make up your mind so i'm just going to start here and pull my arm back not worry about if I'm straight or if I'm coming off the edge a little bit too much, but not work from your wrist. Just pull your arm back. That gives you the straightest line. I'm no um, expert on doodling, making lines and all that, but I'm just talking from my own experience. And we can just leave it right there. You can go back again for a double scribble, but this is just something to create a little bit more interest on this kind of plain piece of paper, right? So I think I like that and I'm just going to do it here as well. And what I can do, and I'm just going to try and see how I like that, is to get that Christmas tree a little bit more to the, um, not the background, but to the, <laughs> oh my goodness, uh, place it a little bit more up front, like make it look like it's uh, in front of that border don't continue the line over the Christmas tree but stop there gosh I had trouble getting that out of my mouth there we go you see what I meant there so again this is not for everybody but it's a really simple and easy trick and later on we can make or use some die cuts to play around and make a little 
seen there on that paper. So I'm going to glue this in place right here. So I just started with things that I was pretty sure of what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do it. And then the other areas we are going to um, fill in with papers that we have left or scrap pieces that we can use really conveniently. And just finish that part up of decorating. This is the base decorating, like all the extra embellishments. I always do that after I've placed down all my papers, unless I'm really sure about an embellishment that I want to combine with a paper. That happens sometimes. So, especially with these big pieces, just make sure that there's no air under your pattern paper. So give that a really nice burnish, starting from the middle, working your way out to the edge. Okay, so that is in place. So I think uh, this video is quite long already. We have tackled some, uh, some nice stuff here. I'm going to do off camera the other side and then in the next video we will continue uh, finishing up this folio with our pattern paper and maybe get to the point where we can also place some photo mats and some embellishments in here.